Hello and welcome to this episode of Cloud Bytes TV. It is our final episode in our Lightning Web Component series. It's the final component we need to migrate across from Aura into Lightning Web Components, and that is our account information component, where we're just going to you know, retrieve and display some fields from the account. Um, so I've made a few tweaks to this component as well from the one that you'll see in the Aura component. Head back over to uh, the Aura video. There should be a card that pops up now. Um, and you can see how events were fired using Aura. We were using Lightning um, events there. Um, and it followed kind of a pub and subscribe model. We'll talk more about that in a second and how Lightning Web Components also does that. Um, but I think it's good to see kind of a lot of the work that we had to do in the background to get that going. In this one, we're going to use some of the more out of the box uh, Salesforce tools and we'll see how much easier it is to do so. But to start off with, um, I want to just talk back through the account list component because we made a couple of changes to that. Um, and again, uh, there should be a link um, card popping up now so you can go and see the original account list component if you want to see what changes are made, but I will highlight them as we go through here. So for the component HTML, we have one change, which is row nine, uh, line nine, sorry, where we have an on row action attribute on our data table, and that has a function handle row actions that is going to call. And effectively, the row actions are the actions in the little drop down on the right hand side of a data table. We'll show you them in a minute. Um, but when one of them is clicked, we're going to handle that row action nice and easy. If we go to the JavaScript, we've got a few changes in here. Firstly, on line two, we're importing the current page reference um, function from the Lightning Navigation module. And we're also importing fire event from a pub subcomponent. So what is the pub subcomponent to start off with? This is um, a file that is provided and a component that's provided by Salesforce that you can find here in the Lightning Web Component uh, Recipes uh, GitHub repository. It is called PubSub. And it is just a, a basic PubSub you know, mechanism uh, for that communication between siblings. So why do you need this? What's happening here? When you're dealing with Aura components, um, every kind of event was done using um, either application uh, events or component events, and they all follow this pub subscribe model. What happens with Lightning Web Components is that for parent and children communication, you can use uh, API tracked properties and you can use um, DOM events to communicate with each other. And that's nice and easy. That's standard kind of your JavaScript communication up and down the tree. For sibling components, however, we need a way to communicate on the page across components that isn't, um, isn't going to require us to fire things off everywhere. And the way in which we're going to do that and kind of navigate across the DOM tree is using a pub, a pub sub, so a publish and subscribe methodology. Again, similar to how Aura components were working, but Salesforce provided this standard mechanism for doing this, this kind of simple uh, file that enables you to do that um, in that uh, Lightning Web Component Recipes um, GitHub repository. I would recommend downloading that and adding that in when you need to do cross-component communication. So that's all, we've, all we're doing there is importing that method fire event from that component. Um, and we've now also added on line six a new array of actions where we have JavaScript objects in an array which have a label. So that's the show details label and a name. And that's the name that will come back from the event that's fired when that row action is clicked. And we add those actions to our data table by putting them in our table columns array. And you can see that's here lines 14 to 17. It's again just another entry on there type is action rather than text or URL or whatever it might be. And the attributes for that type are the row actions, which is our actions array. Nothing crazy there, just some config and setup. Um, what is different in here is line 25. We have uh, the current page reference being retrieved so that we know that we're communicating with two um, components on the same page. So, you know, it's not communicating off page. We have our handle row action uh, method here. That takes in an event, and what we do is we get which row that is, and then we're going to call show row details with that row. And then that method here we have just fires an event, and it passes in the page reference, the account selected event, so that's what we're calling our event, and the ID of the row, so that's the ID of the account. Now I've separated this out into two methods because we could have multiple different actions on the row, 
And this method here could handle multiple actions and then do multiple different um, functions that it was calling. So again, nothing crazy, nothing untoward, um, but just a little bit different from how we would do things uh, beforehand. But again, it's nice and lean. The code is quite nice and easy to work with. Now, if we pop over to our account info component, this is our new Lightning Web component. Um, what we've got is we have our template, we have our uh, template directive for whether it's visible or not. Um, we have our lightning card. This time, um, I'm just showing you how you could put the title um, out just using uh, a slot attribute for the title rather than uh, going away and using the attributes on the lightning card. No real difference here. I didn't really want the icon, so I thought this would be a nice way of showing how we could put that in there. And then we have um, our main body of the card, and we're putting out the annual revenue we're putting out a lightning formatted number, which takes in a value that's bound to a particular field and formats it into the currency. And then we have the number of employees as well. Now, we're binding here to the, uh, so let's work backwards. So it's the value here for the number of employees field within our field set, within our data for our account object that we're getting back. And we'll look through this in a second. It looks quite long. We could work with this in JavaScript to make it a bit easier. Um, to manipulate it down, but I wanted to show you kind of the format of the data we'd be getting back. So if we come now into our account info JavaScript uh, file, what we have here is we have, um, again, our lightning element track and wire that we're importing from lightning web component. And um, the next thing we have, which is a bit new and different, is our get record um, import from the UI record API. In a previous video where we were creating tasks, um, I mentioned that we can't use the UI API uh, with tasks, it's not really supported, um, but for accounts it is. And what we're gonna use here is this utility method that's on the UI API that will just retrieve the um, account record for us with the fields we provide. It's a really, really useful method, um, really powerful, and it just saves us having to write extra Apex, which obviously we don't want to do. Salesforce have written this, it's well tested. We don't have to write any test code for Apex or anything like that. We are then also again importing our current page reference from our Lightning Navigation, and that's because we're working with our Publish and Subscribe tool, so we want to do that. And then again, we're importing Register Listener and Unregister All Listeners. These are coming from that Pub Sub module, and what they're gonna do is register us as a listener for a particular event, and unregister us as a listener for a particular event. Okay. Uh, we have an array of our fields that we want to retrieve, so the name, number of employees, and annual revenue for our account and that's gonna be passed in to that get record function on the UI API. If we go into our class now, we have an account we're tracking and an account ID we're tracking. We also have um, our page reference that we're wiring to get that through. We've got the lifecycle method we're hooking into, connected callback, and when that happens, when we're connected, we're gonna register a listener for the account selected um, event. When that happens, we're gonna give it this dot handle account selected. We're gonna send it to that method and we're gonna pass it the current context for it to work with. And what that means is we're passing in the current object so that it knows where we are and can access things like the account ID, okay? Uh, if we're unregistered, uh, so if we're disconnected, we're gonna unregister all listeners. So we're just gonna disconnect all of the listeners, which is easy for us to do so we don't uh, capture any events. And then we're gonna have our method, um, our wire method for getting the record it's gonna get our record, we're gonna pass in the record ID and the fields. Now note that this little dollar symbol in front of the account ID marks that as a reactive property. So that means when that property changes, we're gonna reevaluate this, okay? And that property is gonna change when we have handle account selected fired and we pass in an account ID, we're gonna set this dot account ID to the account ID. That will then call that, it will retrieve the record, put it in as the account, and that will pass that down to this property and that will re-render our page for us or our component for us okay so nothing too crazy there the the registering and unregistering for listeners is kind of the most difficult thing let's jump over and look at this in the user interface so standard user interface we had before let's go here to the s force um, account we've got our show details action when we click that it goes away and retrieves the information did you see how quick that was as well really really you know, lightning quick retrieves the uh, information it puts up our annual revenue and our number of employees. And what we can do is we can make a quick update and we're just gonna put in a line break there as well for us. So that will save for us in the background and then in a minute we can refresh and it will do that. But you can see here that if we look at edge communications as well, 
it retrieves the data really, really quickly using that uh, preview API from Salesforce and displays that in line. Okay, and what's happening is that when we do that, it's firing that event, publishing it, and we're subscribing to it, and it's checking that we have the correct same page reference and all these other things to make sure that it is correctly being handled. So I'm just gonna give it one quick refresh. And again, show details and now on two new lines. So that's the end of the series. I hope you found it useful seeing how easy it is to migrate some existing Aura components over to Lightning Web Components, and more importantly, seeing how much quicker and easier Lightning Web Components are to program and put together. Um, if you have any comments about this video, please put them um, below in the comments below. If you've liked the video, please like it, it does help. Um, and yeah, thank you very, very much for watching again. Please subscribe so you can uh, you know, stay up to date with all of our videos and, and all of our latest content. And again, thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.